Winnipeg at Fort Rouge United Church. And um, so I'm going to lead a meditation and then Jonathan is going to do like lights with his lightsaber. And um, then we also have uh, some singing bowls and uh, the organist is going to take part and use some of the different organ music. So Jonathan is working on that. And it's... Um, we're calling it a spirit's journey. And so it's just sort of like leaving the fold of the creative source and then journeying and then finding our way back. Um, so, you know, that's that's what we've been doing. So we've been talking about it and spending time just kind of contemplating it and, um, you know, doing the meditation is the easy part he's got the challenging part to to sort of uh, uh bring in the uh bring in the the sound and light uh, but when i did the i did the script for the meditation i i left places so uh he's just got to fill that in so yeah that's coming up in in uh in less than a week now so uh i guess thursday night we'll have a rehearsal and uh we'll see how that goes it's it's uh, um sort of a direction that that we see ourselves going in so i think um now the church says that it does it does record it so the sound will be recorded um i'm not sure about um whether there's a video recording or not but um we will certainly have it available like on our our page here and stuff so that's where i'm doing <laughs> or what i've done and yeah that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it is awesome. Uh, just to surprise you, I wanted you to, I recorded that because you, <laughs> it was something special. And I wanted <laughs> people to know that that's what you were working on, doing amazing things with Jonathan. Mm-hmm. Mm. So yeah, Nick and Bailey actualities is where we are on Telegram. Yay! That's awesome. Yeah, it is. Jonathan's putting a lot of work into it, and I, I, I guess I just hold the energy. <laughs> well, good job. Well, one amazing thing about that, Terry, is that you all have decided, th this kind of goes along with the lesson we were learning this weekend, is um, gen genuine yeses and genuine noes, and doing what, sometimes we don't want to participate in certain events, or sometimes we don't want to participate in a certain capacity, but you had the knowledge of self and you're honest with yourself and others about I'm willing to do this, but I really don't want to do any of that. You know, like maybe someone's planning an event and they might want you to participate, but maybe you don't really want to be a part of the planning and you don't want to be a part of the scheduling and, and you, you don't want to have to be the one to bring the Turkey. Yeah. <laughs> to the dinner but you don't mind bringing potato salad you know what i'm saying or we're not gonna have thanksgiving at my house but if you want to have it at your house i will gladly bring the side dishes and dessert so like knowing knowing who you are what you want to do and how you want to participate because for us next week is thanksgiving and a lot of people <laughs> get sad and disappointed when you know they want to plan thanksgiving dinner at your house and you like, wait a minute, you're not coming to my house this year. <laughs> and, um, you know, a lot of people say, well, mom, you're supposed to. And she's like, uh-uh, I'm not cooking no din turkey this year. So well, that that's just all over. And, and I think that sort of leads us into sort of the conversation that we were having last night. I, I, Erica, you and I were discussing how... Uh, other people's opinion, what other people say, um, they project onto us and it's not, it, we're not being authentic. And, and it's like, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute, just because you see it this way or you want it that way, it doesn't mean that that's, that that's it. But we have, 
we have, <laughs> we have to start be, being authentic with ourselves, right? Because that, that, therein lies the problem is we will do things and we're not happy with it. And so uh, we just are, and we'll complain, but nobody wants to hear anybody's complaints. They want to, they want to project onto you and we keep trying to hold everything up and we can't please everyone. And so it's, Gotta come back to us. And uh, there's a lot of really unhappy martyrs, a lot of really unhappy nice people, and people think they're nice because they're doing everything for everybody. And I know of certain people that they'll do whatever you ask, but then now you're impatient, you're snippy, you got an attitude. Why? And, and then you want to say, "Well, I did this for you, but you didn't really do it." genuinely they're, because they're the ones they're the ones with road rage yeah and so uh, there's a lot of really unhappy nice people because they're they're doing things that they genuinely don't desire to do and they haven't learned to protect their energy or their space and say no and saying no doesn't make you mean and saying yes doesn't make you nice there's a difference. It's a huge difference between being nice and being good, too. There's a lot of nice people that aren't necessarily good. There's a lot of really good people that aren't necessarily nice. Like, it doesn't feel like they're nice, you know? So. And, and the thing is, and, and I can speak from experience because I was always that person who always said yes and stuff. You can't overnight change. You have you have to change within yourself and it's it's something that takes a little bit of time to be more authentic, more authentic. with how you present yourself um it, from from genuinely from within yourself and so you know like don't be hard on yourselves but learn to say no and it may be like no i'm not going to bring the turkey but i'll bring the potato salad you guys figure out who's going to do the turkey because i'm not you know, yeah, like or, those, those are the first things you do. And meanwhile, instead you do the turkey and it's like, oh, my God, I didn't cook it enough or this or that or the, the next thing. Yeah. So we have to we have to first we have to take baby steps. You're not going to climb the mountain without first learning how to walk properly. Yeah. And you'll be frustrated, stressed out, angry. Um, one thing I used to teach is about um, Steve Covey discussed people who want to lean on you for help. But instead of you, you still have your own things to do, but I can do this for you if you can do this for me, like make it an exchange sometimes yeah. Yeah. that to take something off of your plate and learn not to try to do it all. So a uh, big part of yesterday when we were having our conversation and we've been having these conversations about why we just can't care about things anymore. Why we just can't participate in certain activities anymore. And a lot of people are still not even familiar with the term compression breakthrough. So I was going to read this technical definition of compression breakthrough. I always thought of it as, um, the light shining above, the light shining below to the point where the veil is lifted and you can see things clearly and quickly. You could be friends with someone for 20 years and wonder, you know, like why certain things are happening, why things aren't working. But now all of a sudden you can meet somebody in a week and see clearly their character and know this person's for me or not for me. They're not for my friend circle, my friend group, because now we can see clearly. And so I've always thought of compression breakthrough as this, but the more technical definition compression breakthrough is a, a metaphysical term. And it refers to the significant shift or breakthrough of energetic vibration and frequencies of a person, a collective or the entire planet. In this context, compression breakthrough refers to the densities and the heaviness of the lower vibrational energies that have been found prevalent on the earth for a long time. These lower frequencies are associated with fear, negativity, limitation, and separation. The process of compression breakthrough involves the gradual dissolution 
or separation and transformation of the these dense energies, allowing the higher vibration frequencies of love, unity and expanded consciousness to emerge, or I would say to rise up. Compression breakthrough can be seen as a collective awakening or a tipping point where the balance between the light and the darkness shifts in the favor of the light. It is often described as a pivotal moment in the evolution of consciousness where the veils of illusion and limitation are lifted. So illusion of limitation. I like that. And individuals or humanity as a whole can experience a greater spiritual awaken awareness, connection, and empowerment. So greater awareness. The process of compression breakthrough is believed to involve various factors such as increased cosmic energies, planetary alignments, collective intentions, awakenings of individuals, and it's seen in a gradual ongoing process rather than a singular event as the transformation of dense energies and these integrations of higher frequencies do take time. And I remember um, lots of people in 2020 said, I wish people would hurry up and, and I w wish people would hurry up and get it. And I was thinking to myself, 20 years ago, someone was waiting for you. 15 years ago, someone was waiting for me. A hundred years ago, somebody was waiting on a whole group of other people like this is a gradual thing and it happens in waves. And so we can't just look around and think, I wish people hurry up and get it. But now that we're on this side here, we, we notice that certain uh, attitudes and behaviors and situations you're just not allowing for anymore. And I was describing it as like getting all the monkeys off your back, right? So everything that you were involved in, like family disputes and certain job agreements, we've, we've built our life thinking, oh, this is how things are supposed to happen. And we're supposed to get married and we're supposed to have kids and we're supposed to have a car. We're supposed to have this job. We're supposed to work these hours. And so we've obligated ourselves in so many situations to take these things on where now maybe your job, you don't feel like that job matters anymore. Maybe that relationship you've put yourself in, you, you know that you guys aren't fulfilling each other. Or I remember certain family events where you'd force yourself to go to family events where everybody was miserable, but we had to do it because we're, fam we're family. <laughs> and you just now see that, you know what? I don't have to do these things anymore. I don't have to eat this, drink that, go here. I, don't, I, I can let go of all these things and now begin to do the things that authentically, that I authentically, desire to do and be my authentic self. I don't have to fake it until I make it. I don't have to hide or pretend in any way. So that was my portion that I wanted to give. Um, it made me also think of this weekend. I, I was watching this show and it was constantly talking about Shawshank Redemption. And it says in Shawshank, he says, get busy living or get busy dying, which I would probably reverse that to say, get busy dying so that you can get busy living because you have to release a lot of things. You got to die to a lot of things. That's even one of the principles Jesus teaches. Like you, you have to die to your old self to become the new right. you that you're supposed to be. So Thinking this weekend we had a, another release ceremony under the you know on the beach in, in the moonlight to write down some things that we we're going to let go of, which would be some of these dense energies, which maybe be fear of certain things. Maybe one of the things that I put on my list was fear of being loved completely, because a lot of us want relationships and we want love but the chase is a lot more fun than the actual relationship, isn't it? So you see people when they're constantly alone, but they're constantly chasing love, but they have this one part that they're afraid of, which is someone seeing them, 
seeing exactly who they are, really getting to know them, feeling maybe judged by them. And then the actual act of receiving love, even though it's something that you want, it can be something that you're also afraid of. More people are actually afraid of success than they are of failure. People are used to failure, but they're afraid of who will I become if I'm successful more so than anything else. So that's my little portion. <laughs> well, and we, do, we created patterns, right? And, and the patterns become, um, we're familiar with patterns. And so as soon as we step out of a pattern, we're uncomfortable. But um, I think, it, you know, as a society, we have norms, we have patterns. When you step outside of it, and I think most of the people that are going to be listening to this are the ones who have stepped out of that norm, stepped out of society. We live on the fringe. We have different belief systems. We do things slightly differently, but we keep being pulled back into those patterns that are familiar. And, you know, as we, evolution is not meant to be comfortable because comfort is not part of, we have to be uncomfortable. As soon as we are comfortable, we've given up on our, um, our trajectory. We're, we're just, yeah, it's fine to sit and rest, but it, it's when we take into, into account all of the things that make us uncomfortable, those are the things that we need to be doing so that we can break through the patterns and we can, that's how we're going to evolve into a new society. Our, our new society is not going to be based on all of the old stuff, but that's how we create based on the old patterns. And so finding the courage within ourselves to say, yes, this makes me uncomfortable, but yes, for my evolution, I've got to do it. And so I have to say no to, to a pattern that has been instilled on us. And those are those monkeys on our back. Those are those expectations from the family. Those are the expectations from your well, your church group, from your political group, from your your society, is we have expectations of people, but those are limiting expectations based on on past behaviors. And if we're going to evolve, we have to just, or I shouldn't say if we we are evolving, so we have to move out of a comfort zone and say, yeah, this is uncomfortable, but I'm going to see how it helps me to expand my awareness, and and so. Um, I think that for us, we need to be able to just find that courage within ourselves to say, okay, I'm doing it. Definitely. You're, you're off. You're off. I can we? Okay. Yes, yeah, most definitely. Um, what deck of cards are you pulling from today? And also, I, am, I don't know if Crystal wanted to add to that or Carrie, if you wanted to say anything about that little summary. All right. But while we're looking for these cards, I'm pulling from the Intuitive Life Coaching Oracle. Bam. Nice deck of cards there. I'm going to pull uh, today. I'm going to pull from the Priestess of Light. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, by Sandra Ann Taylor. Um, uh, that wasn't what I, but that's the one that I was drawn to. So, so let's cool see. What, yeah, what is what is the um, universe going to say to us? You pulling one or three? I don't know. <laughs> you got three. I'm going to pull three then. These these flew out on the floor. I love it. I like the cards that fly out. Um, so let me see. The first one was unwavering faith. And it says you are being asked to have faith in the unseen. You know what? Um, Magical Michelle was saying that yesterday. Were you also saying that? You said that yesterday. The unseen that you you can you can't base your thoughts on what you see around you. You're gonna have to really. I'm gonna let you explain that since you had a good conversation about that yesterday. Authentic self-expression number twenty-four. Be 
true to who you really are and your life will change in the most amazing way. Can't make it up. Right. right? <laughs> Natural born leader. You are born to lead others. It is part of your life, life's path. And I would definitely say that being your authentic self will make you a leader because a lot of people don't know how to do this. And me and Terry had a really good discussion about this. I met a guy who was an Olympic swimmer and he said he couldn't even have a relationship because Every time, like, say he would be, you know, dating someone, he would be into this relationship. And, and it was like he had to get to know the person over and over every day. Why? Because she would never relax, let her guard down and allow herself to be. Because I think people were intimidated because he was like super hot, y'all. He was like six foot whatever. And he was an Olympic swimmer. So he was buff like crazy. <laughs> I think like like when people are trying to be in relationships with people that, that maybe they feel are out of their league and they're afraid to let a person really know who they really are. So he, he was just struggling. And I think uh, I was saying too that I had a, a friend of mine who... She never let her husband see her without her makeup. And I just thought, oh my God, 12 years you're married and you run to the bathroom every morning to put your makeup on? Like, I don't want to be like that. I, you know, it's actually the best thing for, for you to love each other's flaws rather than to try to obtain perfection when it comes to stuff like that, you know? But I, I, think, I think that's where the authenticity comes from, right? Is who are we, not who we're trying to be, right? And so that's that is that part of becoming aware of yourself, you know, like grounding in your heart, like okay, so who who am I? And and we're not what society tells us. And you know, that's how we have been conditioned to live our lives by by what society says we have to do, what we have to wear, what we have to eat, what we have to do on Saturday night and blah, 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 all of these things. And I think, as I said, we we are living on on the edge of that matrix. We're living on the fringe and it's becoming authentic is breaking away and this is where we have to find the courage and we have to find ah, that sense of optimism in ourselves that we can do it because we are surrounded by you can't do this you can't do that so many rules so many regulations and within yourself how are we setting our rules how are we regulating ourselves well i can't do this until i do this but on the other hand it's not about just self gratification it's about evolution yes yes you can you can leave the dishes and go and watch tv but what is it you know are you going to then feel terrible that now i've got a stack of dishes to do and i'm too tired to do that but meanwhile, you could have done it before and then sat down and relaxed and not have that sitting at you. And I think we have a lot of stuff sitting behind us. Those become those monkeys on our back. You know, what what are what things that we don't deal with. And so I pulled up three cards from the deck. The first one was the Divine Mother, which is nurturing compassion and grace. And so when I look at this. I'm seeing it as we have to nurture ourselves and we have to be compassionate with ourselves and um, not try and live up to expectations placed upon us by others, by society, but to have the strength to um, and fortitude to, to expand beyond that. And, um, it, it takes grace and, and it takes a compassion for ourselves. Um, and uh, the second card is grateful optimism with joyous view of the future. So if we can look at those challenges and know, know that we can overcome them, 
no challenge that it, we're faced with is meant to destroy us. We're meant to overcome it. We never, our higher selves never give us something that we can't overcome. The only thing that happens is that we give up, we give up on ourselves, but we can overcome a lot of those things. And, and I think people are go, go through a lot of depressive states because of just, um, because of all that. So I think we need to be able to be optimistic that nothing's going to come into my life that I can't handle. And um, um, the third card was deep emotions, which is unknown feelings, past life influences. So we're at a pinnacle point where we're leaving the past behind. And we have to also realize that the emotions that we're feeling, what we're sensing is a culmination of not only us, but our past lives or of a, of a consciousness. And we are given an aspect of it that we can help to transmute and transform. And we don't have to do it for everyone. We just do what we have. And that then ripples into everyone else because people are going to see you and say, damn, she's become a different person. She's more authentic. She's more self-assured. She doesn't, she doesn't cave in to the challenges that face her. She can deal with them. And, and so it's always baby steps. It's those steps that we take and knowing that we will climb that mountain by just taking those first few steps. And so that's what I have to say. One thing about, about that too is uh, when, when you walk into a room and you can lean into your true self with confidence and ease when you're not looking externally for the signals, the clues, the hints uh, of who you are and you take that all from the inside to that higher self, like you said, you become the the leader in that room and people who are used to manipulating or controlling or um, gossip or these certain situations, that is intimidating to people when you aren't reaching out for your energy to come from others and you can get it from inside and going up to your source, to your connection, or and to your divine self, your divine body, um, throughout your own energy field, you actually throw other people off kilter. And they have to figure out who they are. When you know who you are and you're true to yourself, other people have to recalculate. You don't have to do recalculation when you are stepping into yourself and true to yourself. I don't necessarily walk into a restaurant and think about, am I the only black person there? Am I the only woman there? Am I the only, you know, I don't judge externally what is gonna happen in this room. I'm going in there with all my, my joy, energy, whatever I got going on and I'm comfortable with who I am and I usually end up making a friend or two while I'm in the room or an association or crack a joke or a smile because I'm worried about who I am all day. I'm not checking to see is someone looking at me funny or they, you know, I, I, I just really don't have that kind of energy to take all those things on because what they got going on, their anxiety, their prejudices, their mis, uh, misinformation, their Whatever they got, that is belongs to them. It doesn't belong to me. And so I, I tend to have like a way better time places than some people. Because <laughs> they're built, you're worried about the expectation. Another thing that you hit, like um, people can, we can pretend on who we are, but being our authentic self, I don't even expect other people to understand me. And so this is another thing me and Terry were talking about yesterday was how some people think they know you, but they don't. And some people, I let them keep thinking whatever wrong thoughts they want to think because it's not worth uh, 
explaining to them who I really am because they're never going to get it anyway. I always feel like if somebody takes some negative information about me, which boy, oh boy, we've had fun with rumors in the last year. And it was <laughs> interesting to talk about that because things have been said about me that I did this and I did that and I'm doing, and I'm like, if I, if, if any one person that I've known believes any of that, then you really just don't know me. If you've been in my energy and you've ever read my energy or been around me to know me, then anything that those people said about me, you would know it wasn't true. Or if you were even a true friend of mine or loved me truly in any way, you would say, Erica, is it true? And you would have asked me. So if you didn't already know me and if you didn't have the courage to ask me, then your actual opinion of me is none of my concern. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think, I think Dr. Dr. Wayne Dyer said it best. Um, uh, your opinion of me is none of my business. It's none of my business. Yeah. 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 So that's that was the collective reading. That's the energy we got going on right now. Besides the fact that it is fall and uh, normally 100 years ago, we wouldn't have had a 40, 60 hour work week and people would be cutting back and, you know, you wouldn't be putting seeds out in the field right now because it's time for the even the field has to rest. So. Definitely, it's a time where a lot of people are sleeping more and you shouldn't even feel bad about it. If you need a nap, take a nap. And if you want to leave them dishes in the sink like Terry was talking about, because <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, Terry, because I'm leaving those dishes in the sink. That's actually something I'm practicing so that I can practice not feeling guilty about every damn thing is, okay, be resolved with, I need to rest right now and I'm going to do that tomorrow. Everybody doesn't have to do that, but these are things because I'm a person who lives by checklists and all day I'm constantly thinking about every single thing that I have to do that for me, it's been a practice of learning to just lay down and be because I've actually been, my whole body was restricted last week of cannot even move without pain to laying down and saying, huh, I am going to eat a piece of cake and I'm going to be happy. And I'm going to be happy doing whatever it is that I, my heart desires to do. I'm just going to lay down and be happy. So learning. The dishes, was, the dishes was only an example of what I I wasn't meaning that. I wasn't meaning that. Oh, I, I totally get it. But it was like, wait a minute, the dishes. <laughs> so I'm learning. And then I'm also learning to ask for help. And I said, you know, I get my son. Hey, if you do these dishes and then he sees that, guess what? It's not like mom's just lazy, not doing the dishes. And I just expect you to do the dishes. I'm going to sweep the floor and you do the dishes. Now the kitchen is clean. We can both relax. Because we need to learn to do that, especially with women. We need to learn to do that with our kids and with our spouses. Like, hey, can you throw this in the dryer while I gather the rest of this to put in the washer? You know, yeah. learn to do this stuff to actually stop putting everything on yourself. So that's definitely. Well, and, and so that, that's the other side of the coin, because we can we can be so devoted to doing all of those things that we don't take the time for ourselves, for our, our evolution. And it's like, you know what? There's other people who can help out. It's not yeah. only your responsibility. So yeah, we have to also spend time with our own growth rather than trying to serve everyone. And so that's where that, that, that comes in is like, yeah, you can be, you can be the martyr and do all of that, but you also have to take time for your own personal growth. And plus and you so need to you, teach your you, kids. You, and you create that time and you can say, this is, I need this time right now for myself. And, and so, you know, I'm no good to everybody else if I've given everything away. 